In a recent Q&A, right at the very end, Dr. Michael Greger dropped a bit of a bombshell. What's more, the live stream got cut off midway through what he was saying. So I'm going to play the short clip and then we'll have a closer look at what might be going on with sunscreen. And so that's why I would encourage people to use some protective behaviors like uh, sunscreen. But of course, what sunscreen, the safe sunscreen to use is the mineral sunscreens, right? Titanium or zinc, not the chemical sunscreens, which we just learned are actually absorbed into our body at levels high enough to require safety testing, which was never done by the sunscreen industry. And so the FDA punted them back. Now, sunscreen is critically important for protecting the skin from sun damage and skin cancer. And we are in no way advocating for not using the right sunscreen. But I think it's important to find a mineral sunscreen where possible. So here's what happened. We assumed that the companies that make and sell sunscreen ingredients and products were testing them thoroughly for potential short-term and long-term health effects. Not only should this include toxicity testing for irritation, but also skin absorption and the potential to cause cancer, disrupt the hormonal system and cause harm during reproduction and development. However, in 2019, when the FDA proposed its most recent updates to sunscreen regulations, it found that only two ingredients could be classified as safe and effective, and these were zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. What's concerning is numerous studies are now raising concerns about endocrine disrupting effects from other ingredients such as homozolate, avobenzone and oxybenzone. The European Commission published preliminary opinions on the safety of three organic UV filters oxybenzone, homozolate, and octocrylene. It found that the levels of two of them were not safe in the amounts at which they are currently used, and proposed a concentration limit of 2.2% for oxybenzone and 1.4% for homozolate. However, US sunscreen manufacturers are legally allowed to use these two chemicals at concentrations up to 6 and 15% respectively and hundreds of sunscreens manufactured in the US use them at concentrations that far exceed the European Commission's recommendations. All of these ingredients listed are systemically absorbed into the body after one use and found that they could be detected on the skin and in the blood weeks after no longer being used. This study detected many sunscreen ingredients in breast milk and urine samples. And it appears that the most worrying sunscreen ingredient is oxybenzone. It's readily absorbed through the skin and, according to a few studies, behaves like an endocrine disruptor and the FDA stated that it is potentially of greater harm to children. In this study, researchers found that adolescent boys with higher oxybenzone measurements had significantly lower testosterone levels and female exposures to oxybenzone and related chemicals have been linked to an increased risk of endometriosis and breast cancer. The FDA have said, quote, the available literature indicates that oxybenzone is absorbed through the skin to a greater extent than previously understood and can lead to significant systemic exposure. The significant systemic availability of oxybenzone is a concern among other reasons because of questions raised in the published literature regarding the potential for endocrine activity. There are similar concerning findings for these chemicals listed here. However, Mineral sunscreens are made with titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, usually in the form of nanoparticles. The FDA proposed that both titanium dioxide and zinc oxide be classified as safe and effective. Studies suggest that few, if any, zinc or titanium particles penetrate the skin to reach living tissues. It's important to note, however, that titanium dioxide is classified as a possible human carcinogen by the IARC because of the potential exposure through inhalation. For this reason, powdered or spray formulations containing titanium dioxide are of concern. Zinc oxide also carries inhalation concerns when used in spray and powder products. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do these findings worry you enough to change which sunscreen you buy? Share your thoughts below and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.